Hey guys, Travis Cook here of Learning How to Think. It's the 23rd of October 2020, the day before the big protest tomorrow in London. I hope you're going to be there. I'm going to be there. It should be a good time. So now, I, I usually keep it quite positive on this channel. I try and bring up lifting information, but every now and then I think it's very important to look at the darkness, look at what's happening, look at what moves it's uh, playing, just so we are aware of what's going on, what our enemy is playing. When you're playing chess, you look at the enemy's move, the enemy's pieces, see what they're going to do, try and think what they're going to do next. Now, this, what I've been um, shown and sent from New Zealand, is pretty damn bleak. It's pretty damn real. Um, and now, if you... I've heard this been put around before and it's like, it sounds a little bit extreme, but actually the question is pretty damn accurate. If you was in Nazi Germany, what would you do? If there's people being put in concentration camps and the freedoms being taken away and et cetera, et cetera, what would you have done? Because this is exactly what's rolling out right now in New Zealand and Australia and around the world, but in different magnitude. Here in the UK, there seems to be a lot of resistance and it doesn't seem to be able to be rolled out as quickly as um, other places. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if it's a collective karma, or the collective resistance, a collective thoughts. I've been reading a lot about how thoughts have an impact on the reality, of course. But things like war happens in the minds of people first. It's, it's accumulation of polluting the collective consciousness for your thoughts. It's an amazing book by Paul Brunton, The Wisdom of the Overself. And he's talking about... He was written, you know, I think it's near the end of World War Two. He's writing this, and you could almost, you could literally replace the words World War with uh, with COVID nineteen, and it sounds exactly the same what he's talking about, which is absolutely fascinating. I might go into that in another video, but just to focus, check this clip out, and uh, if that doesn't send a shiver down your spine, I don't know what will. It's part of our overall national response to this new outbreak. I am now directing medical officers of health that all cases, confirmed cases, are to be managed in a quarantine facility. Now, this is different to how positive cases were managed when we were last at levels four and indeed three, and shows how serious we are about limiting any risk of ongoing transmission, even in self-isolation and including to others in the household. This will apply to any cases and also close family members who might be at risk as appropriate. A reminder, these facilities has been, have been set up specifically and have excellent processes and resources in place to look after people with COVID-19, including health staff on site at all times, and it will help us avoid any further inadvertent spread into the community as part of our overall response. If someone refuses in our um, facilities to be tested, they have to keep staying. So they won't be able to leave after 14 days. They have to stay on for another 14 days. So it's a pretty good incentive. You either get your tests done and make sure you're cleared, or we will keep you in a facility longer. So I think people, most people will look at that and say, I'll take the... I'll take the test. I've got a number of questions about people um, refuse, you know, what do we do if someone refuses to be tested? Well, they can't now. If someone refuses in our um, facilities to be tested, they have to keep staying. So they won't be able to leave after 14 days. They have to stay on for another 14 days. So it's a pretty good incentive. You either get your tests done and make sure you're cleared or we will keep you in a facility longer so i think people most people will look at that and say i'll take the i'll take the test so what do you think about that um that's pretty serious out there for my kiwi friends i spent two years in new zealand boy am i glad i did it when i could but i have friends there and uh that looks pretty bleak that that sound that's a quarantine camp for people if you don't want to be tested you don't want your dna harvested they're going to keep you there that's not freedom at all, folks. That is very, very far away from freedom. That is a total tyranny. So, uh, if you don't think it can happen in your backyard, take another guess because it just happens to be rolling out pretty damn fast. So, it's important now more than ever. If you're just still sitting on the sidelines, like, oh, well, I don't know. I'll still wear the mask and I don't know. I'll still go along with this because I don't know. We gotta fight for our freedom now, guys, because it's it won't get any better if we don't do that now. But importantly, I think as well to remember, which is also stressed a lot in Paul Brunton's book, and it makes so much sense. We can't have proper action without proper thinking. And this again, 
it's so important to work on yourself. If you haven't already started, start now. <laughs> Working on yourself, getting your thoughts into alignment, taking care of your body, because all of that, you contribute to the, what's being experienced for you, for you and for your nation and in, in turn the whole planet. But it sort of, it goes up in magnitudes. You have the greatest effect in the people you interact with physically, then maybe your town, your city, then the nation, then the world. It sort of scales up. But you do still have a part to play in this. Your thoughts, what you're thinking every day, your baseline vibration, it contributes to the collective. If you're all day in this fear mentality, in this fear loop, you're putting that out there, you're resonating with that, you're attracting more of that and you're putting that more on other people. It's very important to take care of your mind, your thoughts, your feelings. And this is where I think it's so important to um, have a spiritual belief, have faith, have I, I'm not religious, but if that's what does it for you, great. If it do, it, do it to the utmost perfection. Develop a really strong relationship with God. Call upon the divine forces to enter your being, enter your reality, and bring it forth onto this planet. Because this is the war, guys. It's on multiple, multiple levels. And we're going to need everything in our toolkit. So they're the spiritual side of things. On the physical level, you can hand out leaflets and flyers and stickers. Talk to people. Go to protests. Have parties. Everything that goes against this, against the conformity. Keep your business open if you can. Look at what Liverpool done in their gyms. They were successful. You don't hear about it in the mainstream, but they overturned the legislation. And uh, this is what we've got to do, guys. This is what we've got to do. We've got to organize, come together and be smart about it. There are many, many tools in our toolbox. Let's use all of them. And uh, if you're there tomorrow, I'll see you there. But I think I will have another video for you guys covering uh, a couple of other nice clips. A bit more uplifting than the one from this one. But hey, we've got to, we've got to keep our eyes on the ball. We've got to keep our eyes in the darkness, see what they're up to. And um, yeah, we'll win this fight and I'll see you in the next video.